Welcome, Val Landy here for today's Discovery Tour with four stories from planet Earth, our solar system, the Milky Way, and the vast reaches of the cosmos beyond. Before we get to today's big story, a scary headline that says we're entering a new age called the Novocene, I want to share some thoughts. The story says that we're in the final era of human life on Earth, that we Homo sapiens are a transition phase from biology to machine life, that the mutation in the brain of a single human some 200,000 years ago was a genetic accident that will lead to a new hyperintelligent species and a new evolutionary epoch. The story reminds me of the first born in Arthur C. Clarke's Space Odyssey series. Unnamed alien species who developed internet galactic travel millions or perhaps billions of years before the present time abandoned their physical form and explored the universe in search of knowledge about other intelligent species. Here's how Clark described them in his novel, 3001, The Final Odyssey, that solves the mystery of the monoliths. Call them the firstborn. Though they were not remotely human, they were flesh and blood. And when they looked out across the deeps of space, they felt awe and wonder and loneliness. As soon as they possessed their power, they began to seek fellowship among the stars. In their explorations, they encountered life in many forms and watched the workings of evolution on a thousand worlds. They saw how often the first faint sparks of intelligence flickered out and died in the cosmic night. And because in all the galaxy they had found nothing more precious than mind, they seeded monoliths that encouraged its dawning everywhere. Out among the stars, evolution was driving toward new goals. The first explorers of Earth had long since come to the limits of flesh and blood. As soon as their machines were better than their bodies, it was time to move. First their brains, and then their thoughts alone. They transferred into new homes of metal roaming the galaxy. They no longer built spaceships. They were spaceships. So on with today's first story, the cyborg epic. Earth will soon belong to its own versions of the firstborn. What's revolutionary about this moment, says futurist James Lovelock, is that the cyborgs will have designed and built themselves from artificial intelligence systems that we humans have already constructed. They will soon become thousands, then millions, of times more intelligent than us. Lovelock is the creator of the Gaia hypothesis that proposes that all organisms and their inorganic surroundings on Earth are closely integrated to form a vast, self-regulating organism. Lovelock believes that our reign as the sole comprehenders of the cosmos is rapidly coming to an end. The revolution that has just begun, the Novocene, may be understood as a continuation of the process where the Earth nurtures the beings that will lead the cosmos to self-knowledge. As, as the physicist Freeman Dyson said, we exist so the universe can comprehend itself. See, no way for non-organic life forms to evolve from the mix of chemicals and in the physical conditions common in the universe. For cyborg life to emerge requires the service of a midwife. We Homo sapiens fit that role perfectly. So on to our second story. Artificial intelligence is out there, and it's billions of years old. I don't believe that most advanced alien civilizations will be biological. The most sophisticated civilizations will be alien superintelligence or machine-based AI, says Susan Schneider at the University of Connecticut and the Institute for Advanced Studies at Princeton. Schneider is one of the few thinkers outside the realm of science fiction that have considered the notion that artificial intelligence is already out there and has been for eons. Her study for NASA, Alien Minds, asks if we were to encounter extraterrestrial intelligence and consciousness, what might it look like, and would we even recognize it? Schneider offers three observations that support her conclusion for the existence of this alien superintelligence. The first is the short window of observation, which says that once a society creates the technology that could put them in touch with the cosmos, they are only a few hundred years away from changing their own paradigm from biology to AI. This short window makes it more likely that the aliens we encounter would be post-biological machines. Schneider's second argument is the greater age of alien civilizations. Proponents of SETI have often concluded that alien civilizations would be much older than our own. All lines of evidence lead to the conclusion that the maximum age of extraterrestrial intelligence would be billions of years. 
In short, if, they are, if there are spacefaring civilizations millions or billions of years older than us, by their standards, we are galactic infants. But Schneider suspects something stronger, that they will not be carbon-based. Uploading allows a creature near immortality, enables reboots, and allows it to survive under a variety of conditions that carbon-based life forms cannot. In addition, silicon appears to be a better medium for information processing than our brain itself. The human brain neurons reach a peak speed of about 200 hertz, which is orders of magnitude slower than current microprocessors. Earth is actually a relatively young planet, so some astrobiologists think that if there are civilizations out there, they will be machines. But planets are volatile, prone to eruptions and earthquakes and the effects of an aging star. AI machines will most likely migrate far from their home planet. Planets are dangerous for machines. Before we begin our third story, I want to share some thoughts. What if artificial intelligence reveals incomprehensible but obviously alien life? If we ever have contact with life from outside our solar system, it will by definition be intelligent, which may be the only thing that we have in common. Life on planets is carbon-based, but it's not totally out of the question to have it based on silicon. Robotic machines, in other words. So if and when we meet, it will transform our understanding of ourselves and the universe that we live in. But I ask myself, would advanced alien life necessarily be incomprehensible? Rerun the tape of evolution, and DNA, RNA, ATP, the Krebs cycle, all of biology 101, and life would probably arise again here or on distant worlds. Single cells would join together seeking the advantage of metazoan life, until before you know it, something like our earthly menagerie would exist. Something like Chalman's Cantina, the scene at the Star Wars bar in the desert planet Tatooine. No matter how different the conditions on distant worlds, all pres presumably have the same laws of physics, from quantum mechanics to thermodynamics and the laws of gravity. Life is simply living matter, material capable of reproducing and evolving. Or is it? So on to today's third story. Spanish, neuropsych Spanish neuropsychologist Gabriel de la Torre asks a terrifying question. What if artificial intelligence of the future reveals the incomprehensible? If AI identifies something our mind cannot accept or understand, it could go beyond our level of consciousness and open doors to reality for which we are not prepared. What if the image of a square and triangle observed on the dwarf planet Sirius were artificial structures, asked De La Torre. The potential applications of AI, he says, is not only to assist in big data analysis, but to help discern possible artificiality or oddities and patterns of either radio signals, megastructures, or techno-signatures in general. The result of this intriguing visual experiment calls into question the application of AI to the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, where advanced and ancient technological civilizations may exist, but be beyond our comprehension or our, ab our ability to detect. Ceres, the largest object in the main asteroid belt, became famous a few years ago for one of its craters where bright spots were observed, leading to some very serious speculation. The mystery was solved when NASA's Dawn probe came close enough to discover that these bright spots originated from volcanic ice and salt emissions. Researchers from Spain's University of Cadiz have looked at these bright spots called Venalia faculi, and were struck by an area where geometric shapes were plainly observable. This sighting led them to propose a curious experiment to compare how human beings and machines recognize planetary images. The ultimate goal was to analyze whether artificial intelligence can help discover technosignatures or possible alien civilizations. We weren't alone in this, says De La Torre. People seemed to see a square shape, so we saw it as an opportunity to confront human intelligence with artificial intelligence in a cognitive task of visual perception. Not just a routine task, but a challenging one with implications bearing on a search for alien life no longer based solely on radio waves. Our, t our form of life and intelligence may just be a tiny first step in a continuing evolution that may well produce forms of intelligence that are far superior to ours and no longer based on carbon machinery. 
Our fourth story asks, is there a quirk in the cosmos? Astrophysicist John Webb at Australia's University of New South Wales says it's a question that has profound implication for physics. Is life in the Milky Way due to the alpha, the fine structure constant, the coupling constant for the electromagnetic force? If alpha were just 4% bigger or smaller than it is, stars wouldn't be able to make carbon and oxygen, which would have made it impossible for life as we know it to exist on Earth. Webb's research on varying constants of nature will profoundly impact our view of the universe if they're validated. My colleagues and I, Webb says, have looked out into the universe probing physics in 300 different regions, and we found the strength of alpha changes gradually from one side of the universe to another. It's a slow spatial gradient. If the laws of physics gradually shift from one region to another, it may simply be that we happen to reside in that part of the cosmos where the local bylaws, so to speak, are perfect for life as we know it. We only know of four forces in nature, electromagnetism, gravity, and the strong and weak forces acting within the atomic nuclei. And at least one of them, electromagnetism, appears to be different from that on Earth in other regions of the universe. Elsewhere, Webb observes, the universe may be radically different with a different periodic table, different chemistry and biology, or even he concludes, no biology at all. Val Landy signing off. Please check us out at thedailygalaxy.com.